Good evening. My name is Dewan Nelson, and I will be your moderator for this class. Welcome to another lecture given by members of the Southfield Michigan class. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Southfield, Michigan class was established in 1997. The Dean of the Southfield, Michigan class is Dr. Marvin Lewis, and the President is Dr. Edward Ewell. The Vice President is Dr. Ron Atkins. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 85 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or an encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because the cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of the chart, of this chart, excuse me, to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, who the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and the title may be had by reading the preference of the Holy Name Bible. Also at this school, we teach about the, the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. 
After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai, showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to show to excuse me, build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional objectives and aims are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers laid in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstitions, skepticisms, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification of the new earth state our watchword, peace, our slogan, speak the truth. Once again, I want to like to say good evening to everyone in attendance and welcome to another lecture. Tonight we'll have uh, the class dedicated in prayer by uh, Dr. Michelle Terry. She may be at work, we can try her. Okay. If not, Michelle Terry, uh, we'll do Dr. Connor uh, Messerly. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. He's, okay. He just said uh, he's in the doctor's office. So, uh, oh, okay. All right. All right. Uh, who else we have on here? Dr. Carroll. Care available to do uh, prayer? Uh, yes. All right. I want to say that to give thanks for allowing me to be a partaker of this great gospel and to have ordained my steps that I have been brought here into the Southfield branch uh, and to give all glory, all honor, all praise unto our beloved Savior, Yeshua the Messiah. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 And also, I apologize, uh, the scripture reading tonight is going to be uh, first John, uh, first uh, chapter and second chapter, verse one through seventeen, by read by Dr. Lauren Lewis. I'd like to say good evening to the class. 
And I'll be reading out of the King James Version, substituting the true name where appropriate. Displayed on your screen will be the Holy Name Version, containing, excuse me, containing, <clears throat> it's the Holy Name Version, excuse me, containing the Old and New Testament, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Trainer and the Scripture Research Association, reprinted by Yahshua Promotions, that is, 1 John chapter 1 and chapter 2, verse 1 through 7. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Yahshua the Messiah. And these things write we unto you, that you, your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that Yahweh is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Yahshua the Messiah, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, these things write I unto you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yahshua the Messiah, the righteous one. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whosoever keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of Yahweh perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light and hath hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goeth because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you little children, because you have known the father. I have written unto you fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of Yahweh abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, 
is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of Yahweh abideth forever. That was 1 John, the first chapter, and 1 John, the second chapter, verse 1 through 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Dr. Holder, for uh, the prayer. And thank you, Dr. Long Lewis, for reading the scripture this evening. All right, guys. Well, again, welcome out tonight. And uh, before we get started, just a quick reminder to keep your cell phones or devices uh, muted and your cameras off unless called on. Um, and tonight, it is with pleasure uh, that I call on for the first speaker. Um, and we're welcoming back Dr. Mary Holder. Oh, I'm sorry, not Mary Holder, Kara Holder uh, for our first speaker this evening. Good evening, class. Good evening. Um, I am young, and if I stumble, please, young in my understanding. <laughs> so if I stumble, please pick me up. <laughs> I do want to say that I am ever so thankful to have anything to say in regards to this great teaching that has been bestowed upon us through this divine vision and revelation that was given to Dr. Henry C. Kimley in the year 1931. Because if it wasn't for that, we would not know anything about our creator in spirit and in truth. Can I, and I don't know scriptures that well, so can I get um, that scripture where it said we must worship him in spirit and in truth? Sure, that is John 4 and 24. Yahweh is spirit, and they okay. that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay, so I didn't even know that the creator was spirit. I was brought up in the Catholic Church. Um, I didn't know much being in there, um, but coming to this teaching, coming into this teaching, um, knowing that my creator is spirit. And that is how we have to be, we have to worship him in spirit, not in physical and in truth, not in a lie. And the Moses chart is depicted to show that he is spirit and everything abides within him as it is illustrated on the chart by that fiery cloud, that everything in the chart is in that, is in there as is everything in this creation. We cannot go outside and look back and say, oh, there is God as we were, you know, known at that time right. uh, because he is spirit. Now in the moderation, it states that he knew that we could not perceive of him in that state. So he had to take on shape and form known as Elohim. That is the word or son. And that shape and form is what everything was created by. He was the first cause of everything right and in listening to lectures i've been listening to lectures um from 
back in 2017 when I was in Salt Lake City, um, because I was, I, but I don't want to get off into me, but to where that's how I came into knowing that there was YouTube that you can watch class. Um, and so that's how I and my girls have been watching class since then until recently in reaching out to Barbara. Um, and so I am thankful for that, but getting back to the point. <laughs> um, so in that state, in that lecture that I was listening to of Dr. Kinley, uh, that pure spirit state is inorganic or it's not in any way, shape or form of any kind. And by coming into shape and form that put everything in order. Mm -hmm. And so therefore everything got to be in order according to his purpose. And that pattern that's next to Elohim, that pattern is him showing forth that everything got to come by that pattern, a threefold manifestation. And so everything shows forth that the creation, your body, his death, everything. And it is so great to have something definite, something concrete that you can then know something for sure. And as Dr. Kinley said, a sure shot to know that this is the truth. And so everything that was made was made according to him, that pattern. And it was then physically made in the wilderness of Sinai with that was given to Moses. And therefore they had that physical tabernacle that they could have touched and, and, and do the different um, services that pertain to being for that tabernacle. And your body goes just exactly according to that pattern. Um, however, I am going to uh, just end there um, because number one, I'm nervous. And number two, I have not been a speaker <laughs> for I don't know how long. And so I am just grateful. I am thankful for his love and mercy, as I said in the prayer. Mm -hmm. And that knowing that the power is in the resurrection as when he resurrected. He didn't resurrect a physical body. He resurrected a quickening spirit. And it takes power to raise the soul from a dead state to life, to eternal life, to be a part of his body. Because that is how you have to go back to be presented to the father. He has to be in you and you in him. So the power is in the resurrection. And that is our hope that that is resurrected within us. And with these few words, I want to say hallelujah. 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 Thank you very much for your testimony, uh, Dr. Holder. And again, uh, welcome back. Glad to have you. Uh, let's see here. For our next speaker, it's with pleasure to call on from the Southfield class, Dr. Pedro Dominguez. Good evening, class. Good evening. Good evening. 
I'm going to say, Yahshua, help me to preach the gospel. I'm going to call on his name. Because sometimes when you walk up to the charts and you walk up in the, the front of the class and you have an opportunity like this great opportunity, and it's a joyful opportunity and it's a pleasure and ple blessing, you got to remember him that he's, he's got to be the one in you to do the preaching and the teaching. And so I'm just going to, I'm going to say, please help me to say what, to say anything that be helpful to anyone else, but, uh, but to give it the way it was given to me without any, any hesitation. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, in Hebrews, could I get Hebrews four, four and four and, or two and, let me see. Uh, yeah, give me Hebrews, the fourth chapter. We'll start at number one, verse. All right, that's Hebrews four and one. Let us therefore fear, least they promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Okay, hold hold it. You know who he's talking about? Have you any idea that he's, he's not talking? He's talking about the Israelites. Back when Moses, Moses was... Uh, um, um, receiving the vision uh, and he had to erect that temp that tabernacle uh, a physical tabernacle and we all we all hopefully believe Yahweh Elohim is the original arch type pattern of, of the tabernacle so when, when he was out there they had they had to receive the word but they didn't like it says in this part of uh, Hebrews they, they didn't it wasn't mixed with faith. When they heard it, continue. For it became, <clears throat> excuse me. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place on, excuse me, of the seventh day on this wise. And Yahweh did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. Again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, today, after so long a time as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Okay, pause. Uh, that's my 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 little testimony. Uh, that uh, if we hear Yahshua speaking to us, or or the gospel through the, the preaching of the gospel, we hear Yahshua talking to us through the preaching of the gospel. That we do not um, ignore it, or but open our ears and our mind to what's being said right. so, so that we can enter into that rest and I know Rhonda one time spoke on on that particular and it's hard uh, she probably she probably go into it better than I can what the, that rest is and why and why it's why it can be attained this day and in, in this at this time in this dispensation because there's a rest that's coming after this this age uh, the, the Sabbath age they uh, when uh we are going to be in the spiritual body of Yahshua the Messiah and uh, at peace and resting from this physical world that we now inhabit. But uh, yeah, Ron, like I said, Rhonda does a better job of explaining that. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a listener and, uh, and uh, it's continue where you left off. Sure. <clears throat> Pick up at the eighth verse. For if Yahshua had given them rest, 
Then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There remained therefore a rest to the people of Yahweh. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as Yahweh did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest. Least any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Oh, so that, 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 that goes back reiterating that uh, you want to believe the, 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 the gospel when it's preached. You want to you have your ears open. And that gospel is the death, burial, resurrection of the uh, ascension and pouring out of the Holy Spirit of Yahshua the Messiah. Uh, according to the scriptures, because that's it. That's also in Corinthian fifteen, Corinthian Corinthian uh, fifteen and one. Uh, if you believe in vain, or if you forget what he has taught about the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua, death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah, the blood, water, spirit, how it goes according to the, the tabernacle pattern of. Uh, the death of a sacrifice, because Yahshua was our, was a sacrifice for mankind. But in the time of Moses, they sacrificed animals, bullocks, lambs, and and uh, doves, turtle doves, and other kinds of animals there on the on the altar. That's the the blood and the death, and uh, the water is the uh, labor, the brazen labor. Uh, that they had to wash the sacrifice, the wash the wash the blood off the sacrifice and put it to burn. Uh, that's the brazen labor. Uh, that's the blood part water. Then comes the water, blood water. That's the pattern, and Yahweh gave this pattern to Moses. Um, he, he revealed it to him and he gave him an understanding of it, and he, they built that uh, tabernacle out in the wilderness and. Uh, go uh, everything in the universe, uh, everything in the creation uh, goes according to the threefoldness pattern: Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua. Holy, most holy place, holy place, court roundabout. These three are one, and the blood, water, spirit uh, are the witnesses to Yahshua, the Father, the Word, and the Son in the earth, uh, earth plane. That that's written in a. Uh, Do you have the first down five seven? No, the chart where they have oh. the, the blood, water, spirit, and the earth plane. Yeah, on the right side. That's that's. Could I could I get First John five and seven? Uh -huh. sure. First John. Oh, go ahead, Dorian, if you got it. No, go ahead. I don't have it yet. Okay. First John five and seven. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And there, and these three are one, excuse me. They are one. Mm -hmm. These three are one. Continue. And there are three that bear record in, excuse me, and there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. And these three, the spirit, the water, and the blood, they agree in one. Right. So that's that's what we preach according to the the archetype original Elohim pattern, the archetype, who is the pattern of all things created. Uh, so uh, that, like it says, they agree in one. I, I guess it's the Father, the Word, and the Son that are one. So that, that's that's a that's a heck of a statement. Uh, uh the can I go back to the tabernacle pattern? Mm -hmm. Uh there's the there's the blood, the sacrifice of blood where where Yasha is the sacrifice to man sacrifice the, the, the spiritual sacrifice because back then they were doing physical works trying to atone for physical sin. Uh, and they couldn't be attained. Uh, attained. Uh, they couldn't attain a a a, a, a complete uh, remission of sins. 
Because mm -hmm. uh, Yahshua had to die and bury and resurrect on the cross to, to give out that Holy Spirit so that we can now in this earth age, in this plane, in this time, in this day, in this dispensation, receive the Holy Spirit and uh, be remitted, have our sins remitted or redeemed. So that's the, uh, Yahshua was the sacrifice and he poured out his Holy Spirit now there's a sacrifice that you have to kill at the gate. And then they, I think they, uh, they wash it before, I don't know if they wash it before they put it on the, or I think they kill it, wash it and then burn it. I think that's the order they do it in. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once they get all that done, they had to put the blood on the four corners of the altar of sacrifice. Same way there was blood on the, on the door of the Israelites when Yahshua gave, when, when the lamb of Yah, when the lamb had to be sacrificed, they had to put four points of blood in, on the lintel and the two side posts and some blood in a basin at the foot or at the bottom of the door. Right. And, the, and that way the death angel or the destroyer would not take the firstborn because that was a plague. I think that was the 10th plague. Because uh, there was ten plagues in Egypt, Yahweh had to prove that uh, through Pharaoh that uh, he that he uh, he had to show his power through uh, through those ten plagues on on Pharaoh in right. Egypt. I, I don't know the exact is that, how does that go in the Bible that he had to it's written in Exodus that uh, I show my power or through Pharaoh or something. Does anybody know where that's at? I'll look for it right now. So there's fifth chapter blood on the four corners of the altar, and there's a grading system on the altar that represents the longitude and latitudes of the earth plane because the gospel was preached throughout all the earth. And uh, the altar is four square, I think it's, it's square, it's completely square. It's made out of brass, it shines like gold, but it is not gold. So I think it represents the earth plane. Uh, and so is the uh, laver. The brazen laver is made out of brass. And uh, like I said, you had to kill it, wash it, burn it completely. And then the, the minister or the priest who ministered in the holy place, in the most holy place, he had a cup of oil a holy anointing oil poured out on over him so that he could go into the tabernacle, the holy place and the most holy place without error, without making any kind of mistakes. Because if he did make a mistake when he was in there, he would die, especially in the most holy place. He can't make no errors. Uh, so that cup of an oil, holy anointing oil was what, what gave him that spirit of Yah, that spirit, uh, Holy Spirit. Uh, when you go into the holy place, you have the seven branch. Did you get that verse? On Exodus? Um, yeah, at Exodus, um, there is one is Exodus um, nine and six, Dorian, if you, if you don't have it, I can read it. Exodus nine and six. And Yahweh did that thing on the morrow. Excuse me. Am I in the right one? I'm sorry, 9 and 16. And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up for to show in thee my power and that my name may be declared throughout all in the earth. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a powerful verse there because it brings back to memory that uh, David and Goliath, when he fought Goliath, he said, Goliath, you come to me with, with, with spears, sword, mm -hmm. and a shield, and I come to you in the name of Yahweh. Right, right. And he said he was gonna he was gonna kill him. I think I think that's what he said. Well, that that that's in David and Goliath, but that, that he came to him in the name of Yahweh, and that's what we all should do wherever we're at or whenever we're doing something uh 
do it with the heart and spirit that Yahweh is going to put in you so that you can carry his Holy Spirit with you at all times. Mm-hmm. And because uh, we want to uh we want to uh flourish, we want to spread, we want to grow, we want to grow in Yahshua. And so there you have the seven branch lamp candlestick, which is the illumination of, of the, the holy place. And that represents Yahshua the Messiah, who is who is our illumination in, with this gospel. He teaches us, like it says out in, in uh, John, I'll bring the comforter to you in, in, in my name. I think it's it. Does anybody know where that's at? Comforter, the comforter. Are you talking about the comforter or I'll leave you with another comforter? Are you talking about that? No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about I'll, I come the comforter shall come in my father's name or else my name. I'm not sure. That's John, yeah, that's John 14 and 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've said unto you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That that's our illumination because Yahshua has got to be in us when we uh, when we preach the gospel and we teach it to someone new or or just to just to carry it in our soul and our heart and our mind. He's going to put that new covenant in us. Uh, that the seven branch lamp candlestick is made out of gold. You pour the oil in the center and it flows out to all all four other branch on each side. And I think that's the same way the ages and dispensation chart was shown that Yahshua came in the fourth age and his Holy Spirit was poured out on, onto the past and into the future when he died, buried and resurrected. Uh, right. the, 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 like I said, Yahshua is our knowledge and our wisdom and our spirit and our of understanding uh he he gives us wisdom he, you got to ask him for it and he'll hopefully bless you with it uh yashua is he um he had a lot of parables he taught to to the uh disciples because uh they would didn't understand it without the parables uh so he has a teaching and he has a gospel and uh, uh, okay, I see the five minute bell. Uh, yeah, hopefully Yahshua can be in you so that you can walk around with the knowledge of his uh, gospel, with the knowledge of him and his teaching. Uh, so that's the illuminations he can be your illuminate he can be your your shine he can shine in you that's what we hope and pray for there's also the altar of incense uh which is inter- intercessor for between uh yahweh and the and this and the and the uh awful smell the terrible smell that comes from the uh, the dead sacrifices we're in, at the gate, uh, so that's an intercession, and uh, right. uh, they had to burn four types of uh, incense. Same way we breathe four ty- four four kinds of air. Four 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 air is made up of four ingredients. Mm-hmm. And there's the table of shoe bread with a gold crown about it. 12 loaves are placed there. Same way we almost have 12 pints of blood in our body. We have a gold corona around our heart. Uh, and uh, uh, blood in Yahshua is that sustenance. Yahshua is that loaf of bread. He's the bread of life. I am the door. I am the way. I am the life. I'm the bread of life. He rained down manna, the Israelites. Right. They needed physical food back then, but now today we need a spiritual food. Just 
you might think you're making it and doing what you doing good and everything and bam you'll get knocked off on your butt for not for not having a spirit spiritual yash a spiritual food because mm -hmm. uh, it happens to everybody they think they got everything going good for them and then they get knocked down the, uh, they need that spiritual food to survive the whole to keep them to keep them alive right keep, keep them uh, strong in the faith you know that that's what gives you faith is spiritual food uh, I'm going to yield the floor. I hope I got to the most. Whole, not, I, I hope I'll have to get to the. I mean, I can. I really wouldn't do it justice. I know there's the Ark of the Covenant, mm -hmm. mercy seat, and two cherubims of angels that where the Shekinah flashes. The minister who walks in that whole most holy place. He, he rotates. He never turns his back. He walks in on a cloud of smoke. The same way that we have a cloud in our brain. Right. And uh, Yahshua the Messiah. Uh, Shekinah, the lightning flashing in, within the two, within the center of those two cherubims. They look like they're looking at each other, but they're looking at Yahweh, giving glory to Yahweh. And the Ark of the Covenant is the uh, ten table, ten ten uh, lo, ten laws written on the on the on the uh, tables of stone put put in the mercy in the Ark of the Covenant. So they also have veils. The, these 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 are compartments. With uh, lavishly imbe uh, embedded uh, angels to illustrate the the uh, earth, the 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 the, uh, the uh, distinction between the earth plane and the the realm of heaven, because that's where angels dwell. Mm. Uh, they're they're like intercessors, ministers. They're ministers, I guess you could say. With that, I yield the floor. Hopefully, I pray. I, I, I I'm I'm I'm, I'm I'm doing. I'm. I'm praying that I, I follow his instructions and don't don't lead anybody in a wrong direction about the gospel, and uh, try to stick to the gospel the way it's been taught to me. And Yahshua Yahweh, I pray. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you very much, Doctor Domingo, for your testimony. Uh, and it's a pleasure to call on. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Dr. Connor Meserly, is he available now? Yes, I'm available. All hi, right. everyone. I know hello. I couldn't say hi because I was on the doctor, but hello. So I'm only going to be covering one, one specific thing today, and that's a transcript that Yahweh had me studying all night, really, and many others. It's called... Yahweh Elohim, the head of the body. And it has a picture of a man's head with the, with the tabernacle inside of the head. And I'm going to put the link in this so you all can find it. But it has a most holy place at the top, a holy place at the middle of the head, and the outer court where the mouth is. So it's very interesting. So the first thing I'm going to cover is your physical head and how it goes according to the tabernacle pattern. So everyone on this planet has a cranial cavity, a nasal cavity, and a buccal cavity, all right? The cranial cavity is the most holy place. The nasal cavity is the holy place, and the buccal cavity is the outer court, all right? Yahshua and Messiah is the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him. He is the head of the body. Therefore, the three cavities of the head conform to the three compartments of the tabernacle. Moses was called up into Mount Sinai, and there Yahweh showed him that he transformed into a great heavenly anthropomorphic being, Holy Spirit. Then into the tabernacle, which he then admonished Moses to go down and build the tabernacle and do not err therein because it was a pattern of heavenly things. All right, and then yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen just for a quick second. So you have the that uh, you have is it a pamphlet or a transcript, Connor? Uh, I think it's a pamphlet. Okay, I was looking for it. All right, I have to stop sharing for a minute. What you share? That's what you're gonna share the the uh, pamphlet. Yes, I'm gonna share the pamphlet. All right, give me one second. Yep, no problem. Give me a minute too because I'm gonna log into. 
uh, zoom on my computer really quick because I had to do it on the phone because I was in the doctor's office. Mm. So give me just one second here and then I'll share it. Uh, three zero, um, zero. All right, I'm joining in now. Mm -hmm. Recording. Can everybody hear me? Yes, sir. All right, cool. So this, this is what I went over last night and uh, I'll blow it up really quickly so everyone can see it. So this is what it's called, all right? This is what it looks like. Here's the cranial cavity. Here's the nasal cavity. And here's the buccal cavity, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is what it looks like in your in your bodies. Connor, can yeah. you go to the cover of? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, you guys won't find it on the traditional uh, stuff because this was actually sent to me by uh somebody else and um i'll pull it up really quick and oh i don't have it in there no don't worry about it. that's a really I've, old I've, I've seen it before i've seen this oh well good very yeah, pretty old they were still at the salvation mm -hmm. army that's pretty old so it's probably when the school first started but that's good yeah i've seen that one before go ahead Sorry. <laughs> yeah it's a it's a really good one and it's an old one too yeah I'll make sure to share it with you all after class. Okay. I really want to read it and uh, go over it. Mm -hmm. So it says next, we can readily see that the threefold structure of the head conforming to this pattern and the following pages will thus show the complete furnished tabernacle in the head region. And it says, don't you know that your body is a tabernacle of the Holy Spirit? And it says 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 1 Corinthians 3, 16. I'm not going to get the scriptures. I'm kind of going to go over them, like skip them, so that way we could get through the pamphlet, because I don't know how much time I have. Our body is a temple or tabernacle of the Holy Spirit, thus says 1 Corinthians. As Moses was called up into the mount, into the midst of the cloud, Yahweh showed him in a great vision how he transformed from pure spirit into the anthropomorphic being, then into the heavenly tabernacle. Moses was instructed to go down out of the mount and build the tabernacle just as it was shown to him. And do not err, and not to err in the building, because it was a pattern of heavenly things. We have found that the three cavities in our head region conform to this pattern of the tabernacle. Moses therefore saw this heavenly being, Elohim, or Yahweh in shape and form, transformed from the tabernacle into a man, thus showing we're made in his likeness and in his image. Therefore, Yahweh Elohim being the head of the body, no wonder we must find the pattern of the tabernacle in our head region. The five curtains shall be coupled together one to another, and the other five curtains shall be coupled one to another. The lips are compared to the gate, which was the entrance into the outer court of the tabernacle. The five layers forming the top lip and the five layers forming the bottom lip are the entrance into the mouth, buccal cavity. These layers are compared to the curtains at the gate of the outer court. So as you can see here, it shows the five layers of the top, five mm. layers of the bottom. Mm. And these are those five layers. All right. The mouth or outer court. As you look into the mouth cavity, you can readily see why it is compared to the outer court. The tongue is just like the altar for sacrifices there in the outer court. All foods must be sacrificed before it can be eaten. There were flesh hooks used for the picking up or handling of the sacrifices. 32 of them as we have 32 teeth for handling sacrifices. 
And I've been to the dentist and they actually count it. You do have 32. Mm -hmm. 32 teeth. There was an anointing oil for sprinkling of priests and their garments. There is a lubricating substance called mucin in the mouth for lubricating oil foods. And that would be like right here in the back of the mouth. Some trumpets were blown in the outer court for various purposes in the jaw. There are muscles called Buchaner muscles, and the translation of, I don't know how to pronounce that. Buchanator. Buchanator, thank you, means blow or trumpet, and that would be right here. Oh, you see where the black line is? Mm -hmm. Each tooth fits into a socket. There were sockets used in the hangings for the tabernacle. And it's actually funny, each one of them has its own little socket, which is very cool. All right. There are pillars known as anterior and posterior in the back of the mouth. There were pillars of shittim wood used for the hangings in the tabernacle. And uh, these are right here. As you can see, these are the pillars right here. Okay. Here is proof that our mouth is compared to the outer court of the tabernacle. All right, so this is the altar, a supposed image of the altar. And thou shalt make the altar of shittim wood five cubits long and five cubits broad. Isn't that funny how it just said that five layers and five layers? So the altar shall be four square and the height thereof shall be three cubits. And thou shalt make the horns of it upon the four corners thereof. Its horns shall be of the same, and thou shalt overlay it with brass. And thou shalt make it for a grate of network of brass. And upon the net shalt thou make four brazen rings, and the four corners thereof. A fire had to be kept always upon the altar. The bullock, ram, and other sacrifices were placed on the altar. The remaining blood and water from the sacrifices drained down through the grate of the altar All right so this this is how this is a tongue and how it compares to the altar the tongue has four taste sensations such as sweet sour bitter and salt the tongue has four muscles and i don't know how to pronounce any of those names but it has four muscles uh the tongue has four veins rain rainy two venae committees, and one with hypoglossial nerve. Mm -hmm. The tongue has a lymph drainage, which is divided into four groups, apical, marginal, central, and posterior basal. The tongue has reddish appearance. Temperatures are taken under the tongue, showing fire or heat always. Everything which is edible has been sacrificed before being placed upon the tongue. Lymph, and then it says L lympho water. Lymph portion of the blood drains from the tongue into the lymph glands in the throat. I hope everyone can see what, what this is saying. Mm -hmm. All right. So here are the four corners, as you see. Four taste buds of four different corners. That's how it worked. The four taste buds on the tongue, or sacrificial altar, are very significant as they portray Yahshua, our sacrifice, during his ministry. Sweet, his doing the will of the Father and his return unto him. Sour, the unbelief of the Jews and their rejection of him. Bitter, his suffering in the Garden of Gethsemane. Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. And salt. All the offerings on the altar to Yahweh were seasoned with salt. And I actually looked up Leviticus 2.13. It does say that, that all of them were salted with salt. Right. So his fulfilling of the law, his fulfilling the law and bringing salvation to us preserved us from sin and death. The Mosaic law was unsavory and could not save. But by him establishing the law of the spirit of life in us, 
salt, makes her offering acceptable unto Yahweh. Salt was also used as a medium of exchange, his life for ours. All right. So the next one it compares is the brazen laver to the salary glands. The brazen laver, a vessel containing water located between the altar and the door of the tabernacle, it was used for the priests washing their hands, feet, and the sacrifices were washed before being placed upon the altar. The salivary glands in the mouth region have the same function. Foods or sacrifices being placed in the mouth stimulate these glands and cause them to secrete saliva, which aids in the digestion of food. All right. Next one we're talking about is a veil. Veil or curtain of holy place, hard and soft platelet. This is, a, this is the curtain which divides the outer court from the holy place of the tabernacle. The curtains were of blue, purple, and scarlet throughout the tabernacle. The roof of the mouth is called the hard platelet, and the portion which hangs down in the back of the mouth with the nipple-like projection is called the soft palate. This is attached to the hard palate. This is a dividing veil or curtain which separates the mouth cavity, outer court, from the nasal cavity, holy place. This nipple-like hanging in the back of the mouth is called the uvula, which encloses mucous membranes, fibers, nerves, blood vessels, blue and red, and the uvula is called little gray, purple. These are the colors on the curtains in the tabernacle. Five curtains were coupled together on each side, forming the hangings in the tabernacle. The soft plate contains five muscles. This is the veil in your tabernacle. All right. All right. So this, this is a side view. And uh, in order to really see it, I actually had to turn my computer upside down in order to see it and understand what it's talking about. And you'll see why in a second. So this right here, these are oil factory nerves, all right? And this bone protrusion right here, this would be the separation between the holy place and the most holy place, which would be right here, all right? So nasal cavity, holy place, seven candles, candlestick, seven branches. Nasal pharynx, the pharynx is used to transmit air from the nose or mouth and to transmit food from the mouth. It is a cone-shaped tube with its broad end turned upward. It is divided from above downward into three parts, nasal, oral, and lingerial. It communicates with the nose, ears, mouth, and larynx by seven apertures. The candlestick in the sanctuary had seven branches and stood on three legs. The larynx is the light in your nasal cavity. All right. I see that because it has to breathe in the oxygen and it right. breathes into the lungs. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, if, if everybody holds their computer upside down, you'll actually see that this is like a, a bowl shape right here. And then these, it's like seven... Uh, seven, you know, like the seven branch candlestick. Mm -hmm. So table of shoe red. The nose is lined with membranes called stratified squamous. I don't know how to pronounce that. Or arranged in layers which form a table. Table, a horizontal stratum. And everyone can find that in Webster's Dictionary. The Messiah is a true bread of life. He came in on the fourth day or 4,000th year. He is our breath. And it does say in all the scriptures that he is our the bread of life. I've seen it. It's everywhere. The air you breathe is made up of four components, which this is necessary to sustain the body and give it life. Air being symbolic of spirit or the bread of life. Altar of incense. The oil factory nerves pick up sensations of odors, carrying them into the brain as the odors from the incense float into the most holy place. Veil or curtain. 
the ethmoid bone divides the nasal cavity from the cranial cavity. All right. This, this is cranial cavity, most holy place. Ark of the Covenant. There was an ark in the most holy place in the tabernacle. It had a mercy seat with two archangels overshadowing with a cloud dwelling between, donating the dwelling place of Yahweh. Beneath the seat, the two tables of the Mosaic law placed therein. There were three laws on one side of the tables and seven on the other. The brain has a right and left hemisphere, symbolic of the wings of the archangels, which represent Michael and Gabriel. The warrior and the messenger in the brain, one side is for action. The other side is for messages. Law in the Ark. The table of commandments which were placed in the Ark of the Covenant beneath the mercy seat is represented in our body by the pituitary gland or the hyp hypothalamus, secreting seven hormones on one side and three on the other. This is called the master gland. Wow, that's just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. The cloud Shekinah the dwelling place of Yahweh, which was in the cloud between the wings of the archangels above the mercy seat. The penal gland represents this. The, this gland is located in the third ventricle of the brain, just as Yahweh dwelt in the third compartment of the tabernacle. The gland is 8 mm, or 1 gram. Shekai and I above seven vessels of the tabernacle, the 8, which is not physical, it has a reddish gray body as the cloud was a pillar of fire and a cloud by day gray. The, the penile, penile attains maximum growth in the seventh year as it appears Yahweh rested on the seventh day. It contains phosphate, which means light bearer, contains animal matter, contains Phosphate of magnesium, green blood, for plants, trees, grass, and this is also used in high explosives and in and flashlight powder. He is all in all. Also, the penile contains carbonate of calcium, which is used for a sedative for nerves. He is our peace. And that's really true. Just by studying about Yahshua gives me peace. And I'm not even out of the body yet. Green blood or chlorophyll. So it's amazing how the same blood that's in plants is also right within our own heads. And has light bearer and animal matter and all that stuff. It's just so beautiful. Golden mitre. In our head region, we have a muscle called the glally. Gallia on, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Can someone try to pronounce that? Galen Aponeurotica. Like Thank you. That sounded right. Which means helmet. This muscle begins at the forehead and runs to the back of the head. This muscle is a broad glistening sheet of tendon like muscle which serves to attach muscles together. These fit over the frontal eminence or lump. Contraction of frontinal's muscle causes wrinkles in the forehead. The writing on the priest's forehead, holiness to Yahweh. And thou shalt make a plate of pure gold engrave upon it, like the engravings of a signet. Holiness to Yahweh, and thou shalt put it on a blue lace, that it may be upon the mitre. Upon the forefront of the mitre shall it be. All right. This is another really beautiful thing that Yahweh showed me. So you guys see how it says small wings and then it says great wings? All right. Hey, the, re the reason it's like that is because it represents both the, the tabernacle and the temple. Mm. In the tabernacle, you had the small wings. And then in Solomon's temple, you had the, the, the bigger cherubim, which re their wings, wings reached to the ends of the walls. Mm -hmm. so that's why it says small wings and great wings. Mm -hmm. 
Yahweh gave Moses instructions to make a mercy seat of pure gold and to put the two cherubims of gold of beaten work shalt thou make them in the two ends of the mercy seat and thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee and there I shall meet with thee and I will commune with thee, with thee from above the mercy seat from between the two cherubims which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. The spinoid bone, if you examine it carefully and with the mercy seat in mind, you will find it to be an exact replica of the ark above the mercy seat and the wings of the cherubims overshadowing it. This bone houses, houses the pituitary gland, which is the governing law gland in our body. Yahweh said he would speak from there. The tip of this bone is called the rostrum, and the above attachment of each great wing is a broad groove curved like the italic letter F. This is the Father dwelling above the mercy seat in the cloud. Rostrum, a stage for public speaking, the pulpit or platform. Mm -hmm. Connor, you got five minutes. Oh, no. Okay. That means everybody's going to have homework. Right. You're going to have to go back and read all this. So the next part is a corpus callosum in the brain. And this is what it looks like. So everyone get an image. The corpus callosum callus body, which unites the cerebral hemisphere, has a portion called genu, which means knee. This genu or knee bends itself down upon the rostrum in the brain. Mm -hmm. This is where we must bow. In our hearts and in our minds, as everyone is born with a carnal mind, is self-exalted or self-righteous. Right. In order to come to Yahweh, we have to come down off our high horse and give the praise and glory to Yahweh. All right. For it is written, as I live, saith Yahweh, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to Yahweh. That's amazing. Every creature has no choice but to glorify Yahweh. Right. That, that's amazing. The glenmial knee portion of the motor tract nerve or muscles of tongue are found in this portion. In other words, Yahweh spoke from the cloud. And our brain being our cloud, which controls our body, the nerves which control the tongue are in the brain or cloud. This means then the cloud representing pure spirit, abode of Yahweh, is controlling all things, causing us to confess with our tongues to the glory of Yahweh. How much time do I have left? Go oh, ahead. Yeah, you got about uh, to 7.50, so you got about seven minutes. Go ahead. Seven minutes. Okay. The larynx voice box. The larynx origin of the voice is continuous with the tab trachea below or the windpipe and opens into the pharynx. All air leaving or entering the chest passes through the larynx. A tree is known by the fruit it bears and the words we speak, which is truth or a lie. The larynx is made up of nine pieces of cartilage which reflect the nine attributes in Elohim reflected in man. The three principal ones, the choroid, the thyroid, and the epiglottis. We all know the three manifestations of the supernal nature, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We also inhale and exhale the name of the Father, Yahweh. It is written that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. The choroidal cartridge is shaped like a signet ring. The shield of the ring is called lamana. A signet ring is a private seal of a sovereign. There is one king. The thyroid res resembles a shield. The word of Elohim is our shield. The epiglottis is a slender stem-like cartilage with leaf-like structure at the top. Messiah is a tree of life. The eye compared to the cloud. 
Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt by a cloud, and Yahweh went before them by day in a pillar of fire of a cloud and led them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. In the eye is a layer of rods and cones, or light receptors, called Jacob's membrane. The children of Israel were the offspring of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel after struggling with the angel. The Israelites compared to comprise the body of Yahshua, the son of Yahweh, who is the light of the world. Yahweh said, Israel is my son. It is by understanding the law and prophets that light or knowledge of Yahweh's plan and purpose of salvation, which is through his son, Yahshua the Messiah, is accomplished. Therefore, the rods and cones in the eye are likened unto the law and the prophets. The, the retinal rods is found a substance called rhodocin, rose, or visual purple. This substance is responsible or essential for the conversation conversion of the radiant energy of light into nerve impulses or electrical impulses, which can be conveyed by the optic pathways. This endosphin enables us to see at night. In light, the rhodosphin bleaches to almost white. The rods are needed for vision in dim light. By this, we see that Yahweh did lead his son out of Egypt by a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. This is Romans 1, 19 and 20. Hmm. And that, that was the end of it. But Oh, that was the end of the pamphlet? Yeah, that, that was the end of it. Oh, okay. I thought you had a lot more to go. Oh. Lot, wonderful. That was it. That was the end of it. And I'm going to put uh, the link in the chat so everyone can go check out all these things. What things? Thank you so much, Connor. That was excellent. I know I haven't seen that in years. <laughs> well, I'm glad Yahweh brought it back out. No, I am too. Hallelujah. Thank you, Hallelujah. thank you very much. Dr. Mesley, thank you very much. Uh, and also for um, uh, calling on our next speaker, I'm sorry, uh, this evening, it is a pleasure from um, our Gates New York class, uh, Dr. Gary Myers. Sorry about that. Um, hello, everybody. Um, very happy to be here. I'm next to a train. <laughs> Sorry about that. No <laughs> um, worries. But I really wanted to get on. So I will try to walk away from that train so you can hear me OK. I really do appreciate um, the previous speakers. I got on a little late, but talking about the tabernacle and the three different um, levels of the tabernacle you can hear me is that right yes sir we can hear you yeah okay i thought maybe i better ask <laughs> um the tabernacle is just absolutely fascinating um let's just get uh exodus um, 24 and 9 real quick and i'm gonna want to get i believe exodus 27 um, but let's get this here because maybe this was right earlier. I don't know. Um, but it never hurts to get it again. Exodus 24 and 9. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and they saw the Elohim of Israel. And there was under his feet, as it were, a pavework of a sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. So upon, they go ahead, keep on. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw Elohim and did eat and drink. So they seen the Elohim of Israel. 
And only because of Dr. Kinley's vision, who painted it up on the charts, could we understand exactly what they seen and what Moses seen when he was taken up. So let's back up a little bit where I believe it says uh, for Moses to go up alone and by himself. Where is that at? Uh... Laura, you know where that's at? Yeah, it's, it's right in that same chapter, just a few right. verses one way or the other. 25, no, pardon, 12. Did you say? pardon me? What part did you, what did you ask it for? Yeah, where he has Moses to go up alone and by himself. 24 and 12. 24 and 12. It's Exodus 24 and 12. And Yahweh said unto Moses, come up unto me into the mount and be there. And I will give thee the tables of stone and a law and commandments, which I have written. That, that okay, so, so he went up further. If you see on the Moses chart, can you grab the Moses oh, chart yeah. real quick? And uh, you'll see the three levels of the um, mountain there, uh, the foot of the mountain, where every the Israel uh, was waiting for Moses and the 40 elders. And then the, the, the 40 elders and the other three, they were in the middle of the um, mountain or the holy place of the mountain. Mm. And then Moses was caught up onto the top because he had to go to the most holy place part of the mountain mm. because that represents heaven. That represents the state where Yahweh gives us a vision and revelation of heaven or a vision and revelation of Yahweh. Right. And um, just like Dr. Kinley, he had a vision on a lower floor of his house, but then he was taken up to the higher level of his house to get the vision second time, but this time with the revelation to show that our hearts and our minds are hearts. Yeah. Hearts and our minds need to be, elevated to get a spiritual understanding of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So then what Moses received was, or seen was the tabernacle. And I hope, I'm, I'm quite sure I heard this right. You either can read it or if someone can confirm it, and I believe another train's coming. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I believe in the pamphlet, it said that Moses seen the tabernacle pattern and then he seen the man, Elohim as the man, to show that the man was created according to the tabernacle. Can I get a confirmation on that, that that's what that pamphlet said? Yeah. Oh, you're talking about the one he kind of just read? Yes. Kind of, you recall it? Uh, yeah, the, the pamphlet I was reading, it's called, uh, it's called Yahweh Elohim, the head of the body. Did it say what Gary just asked? I'm sorry. Say again, Gary, what did you just yeah. ask? I believe the way it was written is that Moses was shown the tabernacle and then seeing Elam as the man to show that the man was made in the image of the tabernacle. Yeah. It was written something like that. Can uh, you confirm that? I can confirm it. I'm looking for it. And can you get the 40 plate chart up, the first few plates? Okay, yeah, it says here, Moses was called up in the Mount Sinai, and there Yahweh showed him how he transformed into a great heaven, a great anthropomorphic being, Holy Spirit, then into the tabernacle, which he then admonished Moses to go down and build a tabernacle and do not err therein because it was a pattern of heavenly things. Okay, that's not how I heard it. It might be a different place, hmm. um, but that's okay. I 
I just wanted to make the point. Um, Wait, there's a, there's another part where it says it too. It says, as Moses was called up into the mount, into the midst of the cloud, Yahweh showed him in a great vision how he transformed from pure spirit into the anthropomorphic being, then into the heavenly tabernacle. Okay. Well, I was trying to make the point of why Yahweh had the tabernacle as the first plate. Because I know there was one, another version right. of the 40 plate chart where the first and the third plate was switched. Right. And I believe that it's important to recognize that, sorry about that, <laughs> no. to recognize that the um, tabernacle being first represents all the principles that are in pure spirit mm -hmm. and that those principles that we can see with the tabernacle pattern existed in Yahweh pure spirit right. in the very beginning. Get um, John 1.1. 1, 1. In the very beginning, mm -hmm. he was already um, set up to to transform into a lower state mm -hmm. that we can better understand with all principles intact. Right. If that makes any sense. Right. Um, to get John one one. John then one. After John one one, I want uh, Revelations. I think it's third chapter. Go ahead. That's John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word, excuse me, and the word was with Elohim. And the, I'm sorry, I don't have a holy name. Bible. The word was Yahweh. Right. The, the, the with Yahweh. Was, That's good. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Okay, so we're talking about how he made everything. Mm -hmm. But he, there was also a beginning. And Dr. Kim, I just read this not too long ago on a, a transcript. He went to Exodus, no, I mean, uh, Revelation third chapter. And it says something like in, in there about, um, he's the beginning of creation. Wow. Uh, and I know it might take a little search there for that. Um, but while one, one reader volunteered to look for that, the other reader can go back to Exodus 24th chapter. Three and 14. Um, three and 14, he said. You want that now? Three and 14? Good. Thank you. And unto the angel of the assembly of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the, in this Bible says, Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of Yahweh. The beginning of the creation of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So when we read John 1, we can put that in there. Right. In the beginning of the creation of Yahweh was the word. See? Right. And then the word went on to continue to create. And uh, that's why it's so important to understand Exodus 24 and 25. Uh, let's get 25. Um, is it 9 and 10 and 40 or 8 and 9 and 40? Right now, uh, yeah, eight and nine, Exodus 25 and eight, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them, according to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. And if I drop down to the 40th, very, very good. So, everything in that table needs to be made according to what he's saying in the mount. Go ahead. 40th verse, and look that thou make them after their pattern, which was showed thee in the mount. Okay, so there was a pattern. And if it wasn't for Dr. Kinley, we would never understand what that was talking about. But um, now, if you go back to the um, Moses chart up on top, it shows how that the creation came out of that pattern. See, and he's seen Elohim, he's seen the tabernacle pattern, 
And uh, I don't want to get it, but you read there in 24, many of us are familiar with it, that um, he was up there for six, six days and then he rested on the seventh, representing the six days of creation. He's seen that creation coming out in that pattern. Okay. Now, just get that verse real quick. Um, well, we won't do that now because we, the, 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 for the speaker before me talked about how the head cavity represents, you can divide that up into the three states of the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, the speaker before that went through some of the um, vessels of the tabernacle. What I want you to get, this is what I learned just Saturday night about the angels, um, where they're looking. And he was correct, but there's a little bit more to this because what he said, uh, the speaker tonight said that they were looking um, at Yahweh Elohim as he appeared on the mercy seat, looking both that way. They weren't looking at each other. Right. They were looking at um, what was going to appear. But <laughs> I don't know where this verse is, but there's a verse where it says that the angels were looking down at the mercy seat. Mm. If someone can find that. And I thought that was pretty uh, phenomenal because I never knew that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's interesting because what they were wanted to see was what was under the mercy seat that they didn't know in a sense. <clears throat> Because Peter read, 25 writes... 25 and 26 of Exodus. What, what was it talking about? Exodus 25 and 20. Okay, thank you. Boy, we're just there practically, weren't we? Okay. <laughs> you want to know? There was a, there's a lot written about the Dominic right in the 20th chapter. Yeah. Started at 18. 25th chapter. Okay. All right, Exodus 25 and 18. And thou shalt make two cherubims of gold, of beaten work shalt thou make them, in the two ends of the mercy seat. And make one cherub on the one end, and the other cherub on the other end. Even of the mercy seat shall ye make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. And the cherubims shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces Faces shall look one to another toward the mercy seat, shall the faces of the cherubims be. So I thought that was pretty phenomenal that they were looking down at the mercy seat um, and how that represents that they wanted, they had that desire to know what was under there, um, the law and um, the rod of Aaron and the rod of Aaron, um, a dead piece of wood, but yet blossoming, showing how Yahshua can make what is dead alive. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's more to that, but I'm going to stop there and go to the altar in the court roundabout. I'm just inspired <laughs> with some of the things that were said tonight. Mm -hmm. Some of you might have heard this before, but um, you, some of you who haven't, you know, and of course, repeating is always, always good too. Right. So the altar was talked about a little bit that it represented the earth. Um, and there's a few di different things. There's plates in it, just like there's plates in the earth. Ashes, just like there's ashes that come out of a, like a volcano. Um, right. If you could go to Exodus 27, I believe. And it um, tells us the dimensions of the altar. Yeah. And yeah. someone, if you can grab your calculator, because it always goes in cubics, so that does, isn't easy to convert sometimes. All right, let's get the calculator up. And we're going to show uh oh. Okay. Geez, I wanted to get something else. Um, someone can do it on the side and you know save it. I wanted uh, a strong definition of comfort. Comfort was talked about earlier too, 
and I want people to understand that these things are really a comfort to us in the sense that right. if we were skeptical, remember the fifth aim says to, um, um, what does the fifth aim say? <laughs> to get rid, I know it's to, to, just, just to, to paraphrase, to get rid of skepticism, ignorance. And um, there was another one. Uh, but um, getting rid of these things. What's that? To extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Thank you. Thank you. I knew that one. So these things, you get rid of those, and it's a comfort, you know, but we have to get these examples, um, these uh, uh, um, witnesses to get that comfort, to get rid of those things. And um, we don't want to walk around wondering. We don't want to walk around uh, um, in confusion. So um, it's a comfort to us to know that these things are real and that they're real to us and we'll be okay in the end. So this witness of this tabernacle, this um, um, altar, and how it actually represents Yahshua's mission is um, helps us to be comforted and gives us some evidence. So start reading that so we can get to dimensions. All right, that's Exodus 27 and 1. And thou shalt make an altar of shittim wood, five cubits long and five cubits broad. The altar shall be four square, and the height thereof shall be three cubits. Okay, that's all we need. Five mm -hmm. cubits. Okay. So, how many inches is that? 16, is it? So, a cubit would be or 18. One and a half feet. Right. So, it would be 18 right. inches. Right? Right. Right. Okay. And there's five of them. So, what's five times 18? Dr. Messalori. It's, it's 90, 90 feet. 90 inches. Okay. 90 inches. So, um, how many feet is that? <laughs> if, 12, 12 in the 90, how many times? Well, let's do it this way. This is easier. 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90 is 360 oh. inches all the way around. Right. 360. How many degrees is the earth? 360. 360. Okay, so you got correlation there. 360 inches divided by 12 inches is 30 feet. Three times 12, 36. So it's 30, 330 feet altogether. That's right. So Yahshua walked around the earth for 30 years. Okay, just like you would walk around this altar you would, it would be 30 feet if you walked around this altar. It represents the earth. So when he was called out by John that he was the lamb of Yahweh, right there is when it started his mission to be that lamb and to uh, preach the kingdom and wean I'm just going to say this, wean Israel off the milk or off the law and the prophets to get the reality. And during this time, it was exactly, well, it was, they would say three and a half years, but it would be as if he was then starting to walk to the center of the altar to be crucified. That's his mission, to be crucified so he could resurrect again. Mm -hmm. Now, if one side is 90 inches, that should be, I'm quite sure, seven in, we do need to know the feet. Yeah, what? So 90 divided by 12 is what? You got it, Connor? Um, get back to the chart. Yeah, I, I got it. It's uh, 7.5. 7.5. So 
if you were to walk from the outside of the altar to the center of the altar, it would be exactly three and three quarters feet. So you add 30 feet to the three and three quarters feet. You have um, 33 and three quarters, which would be exactly the age of Yahshua when he was crucified. Mm -hmm. See that? Mm -hmm. yeah. And he talked about the four corners, four points of blood. So if you crossed one corner to the other, both ways, you have a cross. Uh, look more like an X, but like a cross. And that's where you, Yahshua, representing Yahshua, giving his life up on the cross on the earth, mm -hmm. being that sacrifice of the lamb. Now, let's look at the dimensions another way. It's 90 inches on each side. And there's four of them. So that would equal 490. Right. So let's get the um, prophecy in Daniel. We have this ninth chapter that uh, talks about the four 70 weeks. That's Daniel. So, That's Daniel 9 and 24. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make rec reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Isn't that the most important prophecy on the, in the book? And I'd love to break each one of those down, but that is Yahshua. Um, being sacrificed, resurrecting, the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua, and ascending into heaven and pouring out his Holy Spirit. That's the end of the old law and the, um, the, the initiation of the new law or the new um, covenant. <clears throat> so, 70 times 7, 70 weeks times 7 days is 490 or 490 years. Now, um, oh geez, my battery's getting long. I'm gonna have to run so I can get to my charger. <laughs> I hope, uh, hope I can make it. All right, so, um, the I'm trying to get my concentration, the um, 490. Now, get the Moses chart. And get up there and uh, where it shows what year it was that the tabernacle was built or when they came out of Egypt. Should say 1490, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. So in the so in 490 years from the time they built that tabernacle, the temple was built. The temple was built in the year 1000. So that's your first 490. Now, you have the second 490, the prophecy that we just read from Daniel, uh, Daniel's vision to Yahshua's crucifixion. So that's the second 490. How many times does a priest go around? How many sacrifices are there? There's two main sacrifices, the morning one and nine o'clock. And afternoon one at three o'clock. And um, these two trips that see the priest has to go around that altar twice. He has to put blood on each horn as he goes around. Mm -hmm. So he's, as it were, putting blood on um, the four corners of the earth in that sense mm -hmm. twice. And that represents Yahshua being put on the cross at nine in the morning, taken down at three in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So you have all these correlations going on with that altar. Mm -hmm. Now, you add 490 and 490 together, and you get 980. How do you get 980? Adam died at 930 years old. Mm -hmm. When Yahshua resurrected, 
it was, well, yeah, when Yeshua was resurrected, it was 50 days for his, uh, until he poured out his Holy Spirit. So it was if he picked up Adam at 930 and um, brought him to the Pentecost. Remember, they all uh, resurrected when Yahshua resurrected, right after Yahshua resurrected. See? So he picked them up. And as if he took them for those 50 days to equal that 980 days. See that? Mm -hmm. See how those numbers work together? I know that might take a little bit. I know you might have to uh, um, go back and listen to this or look it up because um, I'm trying to make this kind of quick. But um, go to the ages. He had to pick up Adam. He had to pick everybody up that was dead and um, bring them up. Uh, put on just a sec. So I just think it's phenomenal how right. this altar um, can show forth that crucifixion of Yahshua. Mm -hmm. So now what I want you to get, can you get that etymology of uh, comfort or at least the definition of it? Um, I don't know what you're going to get, but I really like to uh, focus on that a little bit. I saw comfort. Yeah, let's read it first. Um, John, again, John 14. If we can do that. Yep. John 14 and 26. Uh, almost there, sorry. John 14 and 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So, um, you know, when you think about that, people get nervous when you get up on the floor. Mm -hmm. But when you start talking about this gospel and start talking about the truth, things just will come to you. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a comfort. He's just a comfort. He settles us down. And he helps us to realize we're with the brethren. Um, there's a couple of things I do or think to do. If I get up on the floor and just I'm blank, I just go to John 1.1. 1, 1, I go to Exodus 20, 24, like we did. And things, things just start flowing. Um, mm -hmm. Because those are scriptures we know. We know these. And... They show forth so much. They're, they solidify us. They solidify our faith. And it's a comfort to us. Hmm. But let's get to that, get that word. All right. The first definition is to give strength and hope to. The second definition is to give to... strength and hope. Isn't hmm. that part of faith? Yes, it to is. The substance of things hoped for that's what we live that, that's that's why we go on that's why we keep going no matter what the tribulations no matter what it looks like out in the world we have hope we have confidence of what's ahead and what's um the better things that are coming and that this world is just the type and shadow we're like the gypsies in a sense in a world that we don't really belong and that's why it's so hard on us and the devil's always on us so um it's a comfort to have hope of the better things to come um go ahead all right the second one is to ease the grief or trouble of to ease go ahead say it again to ease the grief or trouble of oh, to ease the grief yes and uh, there's a lot of grief in this world. We've uh, had a lot of um, elders that have passed away lately. 
and it just makes you think of how the um, the eyewitnesses died at the beginning of the age, and we just have to hold on. And um, but we do grieve when we lose people, but again, we know where they're going. We know where where they are, and we will be with them someday. Mm -hmm. And uh, not that we'll recognize them, that's a whole other thing, um, but mm -hmm. we know that they'll be there. Anything more there? Uh, yes, one that gives or brings comfort. And then there's a couple others, a satisfying or enjoyable experience, contented well-being, a feeling of relief or encouragement. Mm -hmm. So go back with the enjoyment. Um, isn't that uh, the kingdom, righteousness, peace, and joy. Mm -hmm. And we always have to dig down sometimes a little bit to see where we are. Right. Where we have to get rid of the distractions mm -hmm. to see where we really are, get rid of the emotions because mm -hmm. um, that is the only thing that really matters knowing where we are go ahead all right consolation in time of trouble or worry Con consolation um and you know i think it says that he's our counselor as well mm -hmm. but uh con he consoles us he consoles us go ahead the last one is strengthening aid And those are all the definitions of the word comfort. Did you say strengthening? I did. Strengthening aid. Yeah. So it makes he makes us strong. It's part one of the attributes uh, to have a foundation, strength, and power, mm -hmm. and all in the Holy Spirit. All right. Um, uh, where was I going to go? Um, I wanted to go to, oh, it escapes me now. Um, so you have the ages dispensations up. Um, and you know that in, in some, um, some of the charts, the, 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 not, the letters are written a little differently. Mm -hmm. You have the dis. In the, in the same spot, you have the P-E-N in the second spot and the S-A-T in the third spot and the ions in the fourth. Why? Mm. Because dist or dis, as if we would felt dist, dist from Yahweh. <laughs> um, and then the pen representing that the law was written in pen and ink. And then mm -hmm. the SAT or SAT represents the um, that we're at rest, mm -hmm. and um, and then the ions, of course, representing the ages to come mm -hmm. or um, time that can't be or can't be measured. Mm -hmm. So uh, it just. The dispensation and an ages chart shows us so much about where we are. And, you know, even though it says uh, weaned from the milk, which really means weaned from the law and the prophets, that don't mean we forget them. Right. We have to go back and we have to learn from them. Right. And um, many of the, uh, 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 some of the charts, even the 40 plate chart and the uh, uh, The, the elementary chart. Neither okay. either one of those charts it doesn't show any prophets stories on there, mm -hmm. but there's many many references uh, of the prophets mm -hmm. on those charts to represent how the law and the prophets are both so important. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> 
I want to go to, um, let's, okay. As long as we got time, let's go back to Exodus 25th chapter. Oh, we don't got five minutes. Five minutes about, good. Um, let's go back to the 24th chapter where it says that he uh, was up there for the seven days of creation. Exodus 24th chapter. Let's see. All right. Uh, what verse is that? Let me close up. Okay. All right, that is uh, Exodus 24 and 15. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. And the glory of Yahweh abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And okay. Seven days. Let, let's stop right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just going by what Yahshua was um, inspiring me to. Mm -hmm. um, go to... Um, First Corinthians 10. I want to talk about the cloud a little bit. And I want to get somebody to get the definition of, uh, I think, the, the, the meaning or the etymology of cloud, because you're going to find rock with that. All right, I got First Corinthians. You want that now? Yes. First Corinthians 10 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And all, all were, were under that cloud. Now, he just said he, he was in the cloud. Moses was in the cloud. It's the same cloud. Mm -hmm, it just right. rested atop Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. It was the cloud that brought them out of Egypt and lit their way. They had to, they had to go at nighttime uh, on the day of Passover. Mm -hmm. and it was a cloud that brought but go ahead keep reading and we're all baptized unto moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock which followed them and that rock was the messiah see that rock was the messiah mm -hmm. and then um uh, Acts fourth chapter, uh, Peter says that he was the stone rejected by them. Say, uh, can you did, did anybody find that about the, yeah. it's the definition of cloud or the etymology? It, it, yeah, yeah, I got it. it. It says massive rock, massive rock hill. That's what it says. Massive rock. Yes, of rock. Massive rock. Okay, good. So um, it all goes together. This cloud and this right. rock is our cloud. Is our rock. Um, thank you. So um, I hope I put some stuff together here and wasn't confusing. I just wanted to try to keep going with the uh, line of thought of what the tabernacle shows, how it shows Joshua, how Joshua is our comforter. And, and knowing these things and knowing that we're walking around in his, his image. It's the other one I really kind of want to get, but that we're made in his image. But we have to conform to his image spiritually. So it's just so, so, so important. Uh, it says in there that we are the uh, temple of the Holy Spirit, but only if we conform. That's a uh, Romans, I think it's an eight, and just look it up on your own. I think it's eight and 12, how we're conformed to him. Um, it, it's, that's the union of the, the true union intimacy of um, the husband and the, and the bride. So uh, with that, uh, thank you so much for um, allowing me to speak and um, thank you for your attention and all praises to Yahshua and Messiah. Hallelujah. Thank you, uh, Dr. Myers. Really enjoyed that uh, beautiful testimony. And that actually brings a conclusion um, to class tonight. Um, we'd first like to thank every, um, all of our speakers tonight uh, who, who gave their testimonies. Um, praise Joshua. Thank you for those testimonies. Uh, before we go, or housekeeping, uh, our classes are held, Southfield Zoo classes are held 
uh, Sunday from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Tuesday, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. I'm sorry, Tuesday and Thursday, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, this Sunday will be a Zoom class uh, due to the Orlando Symposium. Uh, so it will be a regular Zoom class, 11.30 uh, to 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right. We well, now I have our doxology. May we all stand in our hearts and mind. The doxology is taken from the last books of Jude. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present your faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belongs glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Let us all say, hallelujah. 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 Nothing escapes the pattern.